welcome to Pesnets. This is gonna be a really exciting episode. It's MCAL season, which means I'm all ready to start the Stephen West show for this year, for 2024. Yesterday, Clue One came out, and so I've been knitting away. Um, because I'm in Australia, it came out in the evening, so I had an opportunity to, opportunity to do some like late night knitting to get started. But before I get into that, I just want to talk about my yarn and kind of like my thoughts on MCALs and yeah, so let's get into it. I'm going to show you my yarn for this year. So this year's shawl uh, for the mystery knit along is just two colors. Um, sometimes this changes like the one that I did in 2021, it was like four different colors. But this year, it's only two, so it was super easy for me to pick colors. I feel like when there's more than two colors, it can be overwhelming to like pick the right color combination that you want. But anyway, so it's only two. So I've got two colors here. Stunning. I'm trying to figure out if the lighting is picking up the colors well. I think it is. So these are both from Regia Premium, and I bought this from the Morris and Sons shop in Sydney. One is silk, which is like this aubergine eggplant color, and the other one is actually cashmere. So I kind of splurged on these. So, you know, I wanted this shawl to be extra special, so that's, that's why I chose these two. And then my second color is like a gray, like a steel gray. Super stunning. Um, they're both four ply, just fingering weight yarn. And I was mindful this year to. I love how am I like, talking about? I've only ever done one other Stephen West um, mystery knit along, but with that one, I went crazy with the colors. So that was one where you had to fit, pick four different colors. It could have been even five, honestly. It was a lot of colors, and I just went bonkers crazy on the color choice. Like it was like rainbow essentially, and it turned out beautiful, of course, but. It wasn't very wearable. It was more like an art piece than like a wearable something that I would wear day to day. So I was super mindful this year to like pick neutral as colors. And that's why I went for these two. So like a gray classic neutral and then like the purple to be like, you know, the color, the interesting, you know, color for the two, if that makes sense. So that's the yarn that I'm working with um, for the Mystery Knit Along. And so, as a part of this Mystery Knit Along as well, there, I watched um, Stephen West's introduction video, and the pattern is called Go Go Dynamo. And he was saying that like the two colors are like the Go Go, and then if you want to add a bit of Dynamo, he recommends putting a mohair in into it. And in the pattern, he'll like tell you, oh, if you have mohair, put mohair in here. And he likes to call it a mohair dare. There's like a lot of terminology um, from this, um, like this whole Stephen West MCAL. He like puts a lot of like fun phrases like that. And so he calls it a mohair dare. And luckily in my stash, I actually purchased this from a secondhand store. I bought like a ton of this purple mohair, just like randomly. Um, and then I was like, how perfect is this color to match with my other two colors? Like, and in terms of like the purple, I would say, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but this one's more, this is like a bright, bright purple. And then this is more like a grayish purple. I don't know if you can tell from the camera. They're looking the exact same to me on camera, but trust me, there is like a difference, but there's also gonna be like a textural difference between this mohair and like this. So I think it will give it that little, the dynamo that he's recommending. And you know, this is actually, it says it's a 12 ply, but it's kind of hard to tell because mohair is so thin. But like, it is a bit thick, but we'll see how we go. Um, but I'm definitely willing to like try it. Like I'm gonna put it in when he says to put it in, see how it looks. And if I don't like it, I can just undo it. So yeah, that's super exciting. I love using stuff from Stash. And this was so cheap. And like, it's, what is this? Yeah, it's like 92% mohair, 4% wool, 4% nylon. I got this was super cheap. I think I got like 12 balls to like $15. But you can tell like it's pretty, I feel like that's pretty old from the labels. It must've just been in someone's stash and they donated it. But anyway, that was such a steal and I'm so glad I get to use it in this, um, in this shawl. Okay, so I was able 
I'm gonna talk about the pattern a little bit. So I was able to take a look at the pattern. So what's really great about the Stephen West uh, M Cows is that he uploads a full YouTube tutorial for every clue that comes out. And so for the next four weeks, there's gonna be one clue that comes out. And that clue, it usually involves like uh, two or three sections. This one involves three sections. And he uploads a YouTube video alongside of it that takes you like from the very beginning to the end of the clue. Um, so that, you know, if there's something that you're confused about, you're able to watch him. And I feel like there are two ways that you could go about this. Because obviously, since it's a video tutorial, you could skip to the end of the tutorial to see what clue one looks like. And I've decided not to do that. I'm going to do like true like true mystery <laughs> knit along where I'm just gonna be knitting and then like trusting the process and like not looking at what the end of the clue looks like. So that's my plan. But I know that a lot of people do it differently where they'll skip to the end to see what the clue looks like. And that's also helpful if you're wanting to like coordinate your colors. And I feel like it's more important when there's more colors as well because maybe you have like a favorite color and if there's a section that's bigger, you'd want to use that color. Anyway, so I'm I'm not gonna do that, but I it's so tempting. <laughs> it is so tempting to skip forward. Um, and I was looking at the sections and like it gives you a little name for each section. So you're able to get an idea of what it's going to like look like, but you don't truly know. You're just basing it off of like the name of the section. And already I'm doing section one right now. And already it's just like, I'm just like thrown. I'm thrown because like, you know, it's just so um, exciting reading this pattern. And you're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, you don't know what is happening. Um, and I'm like reading it. I'm like, where is this going? So I'm so excited. So anyway, like I said, I was able to um, start knitting last night. And so I have a little bit of knitting. Spoiler alert, if you do not want to spoil it, don't watch this section, but I will be showing it to you. Mind you, I haven't finished section one. This is a part of section one. So I still have a little bit of ways to knit for me to finish section one. So it's your last chance. I'm giving you one final warning. If you don't want to spoil it, then please skip forward. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here she is. So it's really interesting. This is one of three semicircles. So I'm going to make two more of these. And that's why I'm so intrigued because I'm like, Three, like three of these, you know, you snip the yarn, so it's like three semicircles, separate semicircles. So I'm like so intrigued where this is going to go. And this is really interesting. Um, the way I feel like with Stephen West, he's really mindful of like where to make things interesting and hard and where to make things a little bit easier and like potato chip knitting. Um, I can tell like from this beginning, it, it was relatively easy because it's like a combination of garter and um, stockinette. So you can see it with the purple, it's like popping out because that is um, garter stitch. And then the purple is more like recessed in because it's stockinette. So it's like really interesting texture as well. Um, and so that was like relatively easy, but it's also the energy of making two more of these. And because it's like the beginning and I'm like fresh and excited, like that's not a problem. And I feel like he's like thought about that when he was, you know, creating this pattern, like, oh, they're gonna be fresh faced, like, ready. Like, let's throw them like this, and so they make three of them. Because later on, you know, they're gonna be kind of uh, pattern fatigued or whatever. Um, and so let's make sure that they do this first. So that's really interesting. And usually with things like that, once you've done a really difficult section that, like, you need to use your brain and concentrate, he'll give you, you know, a stockinette or a garter stitch section where you're able to like rest a little bit. So anyway, I'm super intrigued. I'm super excited. I'm going to keep knitting on this. I have a couple of more stripes to go on this semicircle before I move on to the next semicircle. Um, but yeah, I should just have like three of these. They're going to look the exact same. But super exciting. It's also really fun because I have two uh, friends who are also doing this. And so we've started like a group chat. 
And um, it, which is really good for motivation because I'm definitely one of those people that fall behind in the clues. Like I'm not that person who's like finishing it week on week, like ready for the next one. I always fall behind. So I feel like that group chat is also going to give me accountability um, and like sending photos and being like, oh, here's like my finished section. And then I get to see their finished section in the different colors. So yeah, I'm like super excited. This is like the first time when I last did the MCAL, I didn't have that. So that's why I'm like super excited. I have like other people to talk to while we're doing it. So I am super excited and I'm going to finish the semicircle and keep on going with the other semicircles. Wish me luck. Hello again, um, we've skipped forward. This is day three since Clue 1 has come out and I've been able to finish section one of Clue 1. So I'm one third of the way through Clue 1 and, oh, I forgot to say spoilers, but anyway, I'm obviously showing you what I've like knitted up to this point. So I've been able to make three of the semicircles. I'm glad there was only three because by the time I was midway through the third one, I was like, I'm ready to like finish with this so I'm glad there was only three thus far um Stephen West has posted like a spoiler of like everyone else's clue one I have no idea how people how people are finishing it so quickly I have a feeling it's the pictures of the test knitters who are able to get the pattern before it was out I'm assuming it's only been three days like surely people are not knitting that quickly and I accidentally did see it <laughs> But not in detail. So I saw like a flash of what the entire clue one looks like, but I don't, I didn't look at it in detail. So I'm still like pretty untouched in terms of like what this clue one's going to look like. Um, in terms of like how I'm feeling so far, feeling pretty good. It'll be interesting to see like where this is going, especially now that I have three separate pieces, like how it's all going to come together. I was talking with like my friends who are also doing this pattern and where like it's really interesting to see their color configurations because you have a contrast color and a main color and for me I made the gray the main color because in my brain I was like gray is a neutral color so that'll be my main color and then the purple is more like my contrast color like my pop but one of my friends did it the other way around where she had like the color pop like the darker color as the main color and then the lighter color as the contrast color. Anyway, so like even though the color, the pattern's the same, um, the, the different color configurations, light to dark, makes it look really different. Like I feel like the way I've done this, it makes it look like a target. Like how the dark is like recessed in, so it looks a bit like a, like a target. Anyway, feeling super good. I'm really excited to get into the next section, which is called Garter Stripes. So I'm, I'm excited because garter, I love garter stitch in terms of like knitting it. So, and I'm hoping like it will be me putting like these three pieces together. I'm assuming, I, I don't know, but I, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen in the next section. So wish me luck. I'm going to keep on knitting. This is, I'm not sure what day it is, but it's the day before Clue 2 is going to come out. And it is going to be a race to the finish, <laughs> finish Clue 1 on time before Clue 2 comes out. So I'll show you what I'm up to. I just finished um, Section 2 of Clue 1. And this is a bit hard to show because my corded needles are super short. So it's like everything's all crumpled up together. But essentially, I have now been able to incorporate all of the semicircles um, with the garter stitch rows that we had done in the in the previous section. Um, I love the look of it. I have to confess though that during this, like the garter stitch um, border, like these sections here, I was losing a bit of motivation and it, like, just like as a reflection, starting it was difficult only because 
I wasn't able to pick up on like the pattern repeat. But then after like the first section, it got way easier. But like in the middle of the first like garter stitch border, I was like, okay, I need some motivation. I'm just gonna have a little quick peek at what clue one looks like because I initially promised myself I wasn't gonna look, but I was lacking some motivation in the moment. So I was like, okay, let's skip forward in the YouTube tutorial and look at it. I am super excited how it looks. It looks really beautiful. I'm really intrigued about the section I am currently up to, which is called Bubbles or Bubbles. Sorry, I forgot what it's called, but I saw like what it looks like in the end. It looks really great. Um, I'm super intrigued. I have a feeling this is going to be absolutely massive, like a massive shawl, because I, um, obviously I don't really know if this is the bottom, if this is the top. I'm assuming that this is the bottom, and we're already starting with so many stitches. So anyway, it's super exciting. Um, it was also fun to take a look at the final, like what Clue 1 looked like in the YouTube video, because then I was also able to look at um, Stephen West reposting of everyone else's Clue 1, so I got to see it like in different colors, and and like different yarn textures and stuff. So that was fun. And I'm really looking forward to finishing the next section, which is the bauble section. And I'm finally happy that I'm knitting in all of one piece rather than separate pieces, but there's so many stitches. So we'll see how we go. Hello, I'm reporting back because disaster has officially struck. <laughs> I've made a pretty terrible mistake. So in the process of getting all of the live stitches onto my cord, on my needle cords, it seems that I've dropped a stitch and I've only just noticed after knitting like four rows, and mind you, one row is like 400 stitches. So I'll show you what has happened. I'm so angry at myself that I didn't notice. So I put the dropped stitch on this stitch marker so it doesn't keep on unraveling. And what's terrible about it is like, I can't, you know, just, redo it does that like because it's like a different section I can't like get a crochet hook and just do it externally like I'll have to unravel the whole thing and I'm so annoyed at myself <laughs> and this is awful because like normally my habit would be to put this in the naughty corner but I literally can't I have just today and have it tomorrow to finish clue one before clue two gets out, so I'm so annoyed. But I will take a break just so that I don't get like too worked up about it. But that's where we're at. I'm gonna have to unravel all of these um, stitches that I just did for me to just fix that one drop stitch. Hopefully that's the way to go about it. I don't see any other way that I can fix it besides doing that, so it's super unfortunate. We'll see what happens. I might experiment. Like, I have nothing to lose, really, as long as I don't touch any of the other stitches. Like, we'll see what happens. I will update you. Hello. Apologies for the new angle. I don't have my, like, normal stands. I've had to improvise. So I just finished clue one, and clue two came out yesterday, yesterday evening. So it hasn't been out for long. So I just wanted to show you uh, my clue one, which is right here. I'm so annoyed at my cord length. It's really difficult for me to like show it because it's like all bunched up. But essentially I finished the little cute bubble section, which I adore. Oh, <laughs> it, it reminds me of, um, what's it called? Bubble wrap? Because you're able to like push in the bubbles. And then like push them back out, which I think is really fun. It reminds me of like those fidget boards that is really popular with like the bumps that you get to press in. Anyway, so really cute. Um, the way that it was knitted though, like the actual technique, terrifying. Actually, while I was doing it, I feel like I've done something similar before in his shawl that I did, whose name, Shawlography. I'm sure I did this in Shawlography, so I'm gonna go, when I get home, I'm gonna check my shawl to see if this is in it, because like, it involves dropping like heaps of stitches, like on purpose, which is why it was so terrifying. And I'm sure I've done that before, something similar, so I'm gonna go home and check. Hi, Editing Presley here. I went and looked for my Shawlography, and I think, 
these little orange bumps here are like the same technique that I that I done in this year's shawl. This one looks a bit different though. It looks more rectangular, but I'm sure like based on like this stitch here and then comparing it to the one like in this year's shawl, I'm pretty sure it's the same, but I don't know why it doesn't look quite the same. But anyway, there you go. But love it. It looks so cute. I ran into a little bit of a problem that I freaked out about. Like somehow I, when I did this bubble section, I like knitted it so tight that I couldn't even move the stitches up and down this cord. I don't know how I did it. I just like fought it. Like I literally like was fighting with the shawl to get all its stitches up to the end so I could do like my final two rows. But it looks fine. But in the moment I was freaking out because like I was agitating the yarn so much that it was getting like really fluffy. But it's like, I don't mind a fluffy shawl. Like it's just gonna be nice. It's gonna be warm. So I'm glad I made it through. I was genuinely thinking I was gonna have to rip back. I'm glad I didn't like that was me being on panic mode thinking I had to do that um so yeah super happy with it it's looking gorgeous like I think it looks crazy my mom actually looked at it and was like that looks so complicated I'm like it really isn't that complicated it hasn't been complicated thus far but it looks really impressive so with clue two I did take a sneak peek and the reason why I did that is because we're up to brioche sections now i've never done brioche before um and what's really good about the stephen west shawls is that they will give you a brioche like a brioche option and then a non-brioche option and i've usually taken the non-brioche option this year however i think i'm going to give brioche a go and the reason why i'm going to give it a go is number one it includes like the mohair dare. We're going to be including like the mohair dare in this section. And I took a look at like the end of the clue and I really liked how his mohair dare looked in the brioche. And I was like, oh, I want that. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that there's actually sections of brioche and that bubble that we've already done. And so there's two of each of those sections. And so I'm thinking, well, I can attempt doing the first section as brioche. And if I think it's too hard or too frustrating, I can then do the other section in the eyelet option. That he, That's like the alternative option. So either way, I'm going to give it a go. I might not necessarily do all of the sections in brioche. I might just do one of them in brioche and then give up and then swap over to the easier option. We'll see. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about my mohair, my mohair dare quickly. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but this is something that I picked up at an op shop. I literally have like 15 balls of these, which is insane. Um, I think I'll just need this one for this project, but it's funny because I just had it lying around and it like matches perfectly like with my colors. Like that was a complete coincidence. So I was just really lucky that I had that lying around. I didn't have to buy this mohair. It was already in my stash. Um, and this is like a 12 ply. Of course, I've taken the label off so I can't show you what it is. Let me, let me just quickly go and see if I can find it. Okay. Let me put it on. I'll put it on so we can get the full effect. Here it is. This is the Cleck, oh my god, Cleck Heaton Mohair in a 12 ply. So he, Stephen West recommended a lace weight mohair. And even though this says 12 ply, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like if you ignore the fuzziness of it, it's kind of like the same thickness as my fingering yarn. So I'm like, hopefully that doesn't like mess it all up. The fact that it's like so thick because the fuzziness will add to the thickness of it. Like, and I'm imagining doing the brioche. Hopefully that won't impact it. We'll see, but I'm still gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna use this. I'm just kind of worried about, cause it's like the contrast color within like the brioche. I don't know, but I think if it's thicker, it might be able to show a bit more obviously in the brioche. I don't know, we'll see, we'll, we'll experiment. Like, if I don't like the look of it, I can always just rip back. I just don't wanna do that. But if it's like worst case scenario, I'll just rip back. But yeah, super excited for the next um, section. I appreciate that it's so short. It's only, it's really only, like last one we did like all this stuff and it was like three sections of different things. But now this upcoming 
clue is like two techniques um, and then two rows of each of those techniques. And I think he did that because like brioche just takes a long time. It's really fiddly. So I appreciate that he like was like, okay, here's brioche, work on that. And then we'll move on to the next clue, which I, which I appreciate. But anyway, thank you for watching my clue one of Stephen West. I'm super excited how it's turning out. And I love seeing everyone else's like interpretations, colors of like the shawl. And I literally cannot wait to get it done. I'm so excited, loving how it's looking. So I'll see you in the next, in the next video.